Cool cuz, eh? Nigga, what? what's up? How gangster are you cuz? I don't fuck with you cuz you disrespecting me. Woo! I don't fuck with you cuz you disrespecting me. Woo! I go no, hard cuz. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. Child, it is a snowstorm out here. I am in the Midwest, in the Twin Cities, and we are currently dealing with the blizzard. So a lot of y'all probably gonna get some late Christmas presents for me because I try to go and send some stuff off yesterday and the temperature dropped down to zero. And then when I was gonna go live yesterday, my chest started hurting and I was like, you know what? Let me just go to sleep. <laughs> so it is freezing. Um, they ended up closing the schools. It was negative five earlier. So we are dealing with one of the coldest winters um, in a while. And the South is also gonna be facing some really cold um, temperatures as well. Um, everybody, hey y'all. So everybody, like I've been telling y'all on Discord, make sure you guys have your backup generators because y'all know you got a bunch of crazy people out here shooting out the grid. Now we got the, you know, the grids getting frozen. So just make sure you guys, you know what I mean, have all the stuff that you guys need so you guys are not stuck in the cold just in case. It's better to be prepared than not prepared. So I hope you guys are doing good. Okay, Rachel, you got your generator today? I know that's right. I got a big boy generator. I don't play that shit. It is too cold. I cannot be sitting in no cold house. So like I said, if the lights and all that stuff go out, if it gets so cold that everything freezes, we will be in here nice and warm. Okay. So I hope y'all are doing good. It's a lot to talk about. It is a mess. This case is a mess. And I find a lot of things interesting with this case. Um, what I find very, very funny is that everything I have been saying, just because I'm a good reader of energy, I'm a good reader of bullshit, everything I've been saying about this entire situation, literally four months has been coming to fruition. It's, it's literally like everything I've been saying on these lives and in these videos have literally been coming out in court. Okay. I'm just like, at this point, it's a lot to break down. I got time today, though. We're going to break it down. I'm not going nowhere no time soon. We got about 4,000 people in here. Come on in. Yes, t Grow Diamonds has been on point. I just been laughing, looking at all of this. Um, you guys like the short hair? Thank y'all. Appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I like to go short. Um, I just been watching all of this, and I, I'm finding a lot of things interesting. Now, today, it was announced that supposedly her media team is thinking about pressing, uh, not pressing charges, what they say. They're upset with how bloggers are shaping the conversation around Meg Thee Stallion, okay? So we're going to get into some real stuff here. And again, like I told y'all from day one, I'm no Meg Thee Stallion fan. I'm not about to jump on somebody's train because they're hot or they have a hot song. I don't give a damn about that. I've been watching her moves from day one and her moves have been janky to me. Okay. Does that excuse the fact that she was shot? Absolutely not. But two things can be correct at once that she can be a victim of violence and she can still have a flawed character. And I'm tired of people thinking that they can shame people into seeing something different because she happens to be the victim, okay? Two things can be correct at once. And I've always said this. Um, the whole thing has been made murky and messy and compliments of Megan herself. She played a hand in this. So I don't know why people are more mad at bloggers and YouTubers than they are at the nonsense that all three of these celebrities played in convoluting and muddying up this case, okay? So what I find very interesting is now we have big time attorneys sending messages and I, and I mess with Pop Crave, shout out to Pop Crave. They've always supported their tea sippers. They share my post on Twitter. Let me go ahead and share this with you guys really quick. Give me just a second. Let's see here, is this the one that I wanna use? Yes, okay. So Pop Craze posted this earlier today. 
They said one of Meg the Stallion's lawyers, Alex Spiro, tells at Kattenberg that she is exploring all legal options against bloggers spreading misinformation about her during the Tory Lanez trial. Okay. And then they wrote a whole NBCnews.com article. Uh, the person, here she is. Or is this person, Katen? Says, Pop Crave has the real news only. Thank you, Pop Crave. Now, I find this very funny, uh, Kat, that you're saying that Pop Crave, and I'm just assuming maybe Pop Crave is ran by Black folks. I don't know, but I doubt it. They're the only ones who have the real news. That's interesting. So let's go ahead and read this article. How Tory Lane's trial bloggers are shaping conversation around Meg Thee Stallion. An industry of infotainment bloggers have used their platform to discredit Megan since July 2020 shooting involving Tory Lanez. They go on to say Meg Thee Stallion isn't on trial. The man charged with shooting her in both feet, the Canadian rapper Tory Lanez is. But if you consume content from your most popular hip hop bloggers, podcasters and, show, and social media accounts, you might be misled. First of all, ma'am, you sound crazy because when she first came out, she said she got shot in both feet. Then she came out and said it was just her foot. But now you're saying it's both feet. Okay. Um, then they go on to say the outlets are part of a new wave of infotainment where content creators cover consequential events without the expectation of adhering to journalistic standards. In the Tory Lanez trial, at any given moment, a follower might believe Tory Lane's DNA was conclusively not found on the gun used during the shooting or that Kylie Jenner kicked Megan out of her house, though there's no evidence to support this idea. Some question if Meg Thee Stallion was even shot at all. These online personalities draw thousands to millions of viewers for their celebrity-related news and often share provocative unverified rumors to their throngs of followers. This results online fearer fueled by misogyny, uh, misinformation that pits high profile women such as Megan Thee Stallion or Amber Heard. Oh, interesting, gotta slip the white girl in there. Or Amber Heard against a man accused of destructive behavior such as Tory Lanez or Johnny Depp. Oh, okay. So now Amber all of a sudden is innocent, got it. Lanes, whose legal name is Daystar Peterson, is on trial for the July 2020 incident in which Meg Thee Stallion, whose legal name is Megan Jovan Ruth Pete, alleges that Peterson shot her in the foot as they were leaving a party at Kylie Jenner's home in the car. Peterson denies the claims. Pete publicly condemned commentary from blogs and social media in September, writing, it might be funny to y'all on the internet, just another messy topic for y'all to talk about, but this is my real life and I'm real hurt and traumatized. Blog sites like No Jumper, Hollywood Unlock, and others have drawn criticism for casting doubt on Pete's allegations. Podcast blogs, social media accounts have covered a range of topics, including theories that Pete wasn't actually shot, drawn from a police report that was not included in the results of her that, that did not include the results of her surgery. Many also focus on Pete's sexual history and portrayed her as the aggressor and a liar to undermine her testimony. The narratives have become viral social media content. It's been very clear. I've seen entertainment and gossip spaces commenting on cases that she's been set up or as someone who is out on her behalf, lying, problematic in all ways, said Catherine Knight Steele, a communications professor at the University of Maryland and the author of Digital Black Feminism. This points to the way that mis and disinformation and misogynoir is trafficked because of its profitability. Even in the black community, it's profitable for these sites to traffic in the most vile stereotypes about black women. Uh, misogynoir refers to a particular misogynoir directed towards black women where race and gender play both roles in the bias. Okay. So that is what they had to say. And I see the tea sippers with the tiny violins and the tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. Okay. This is my thing here. Let me keep it all the all the way a buck. It's very funny that 
This really doesn't have a lot to do with Megan. They're using her as the catalyst. They're also throwing Amber Heard in there for good measure with her good shit and lying ass. Um, what it is is that the mainstream media is in their feelings because we as YouTubers and bloggers, we get more views than them. We get more people who support us. We can go live with our notes. We don't have to run notes past our editor or past production. We can leave court right you know, during lunch. Go live and speak to thousands of followers like Armand Wiggins has been doing and Dennis um, has been doing. Um, who else? Mo, the attorney from Lawyers at Work. Um, so because a lot of people are able to do this and they don't have the same leeway, they're in their feelings, okay? First and foremost, what I find very interesting, give me just a second here. Dennis Byron. I don't know why his last name just slipped my head. Shout out to Dennis. Now, what I find very interesting is this. Dennis Byron has been covering court cases for years. Okay, so this is nothing new for him. He's been doing this. But I believe that Dennis has inspired a new generation of young Black people to start going down to these courtrooms. We saw this, and I shouted out a lot of people during the whole Sweetie Pies uh, court case with Tim, um, you know, who had killed Andre, his nephew. You had a lot of YouTube bloggers go down there, and they were literally court correspondents, and they kept everybody abreast on what was going on. Um, I don't know the other lady from Mob Radio. I don't listen to her, um, but Dennis told me about her. She's been down there as well. I guess she's Team Tory, and a lot of y'all are not people in my comment section, but a lot of people feel a way about her, um, which to me is silly because she has a right to be team whoever she wants to be on. That's her business. But what I find very interesting is that all of these mainstream outlets are upset. And the real reason why they're upset is because you have a bunch of black Negroes coming down to the courtroom taking their job. Let's keep it real. This is what it boils down to. They want everything to be for Nancy Dillon, who's been doing a wonderful job, might I add, um, and other white journalists who are used to covering these cases. They're not used to a bunch of fucking Negroes running down there like, hey, y'all, reporting live uh, from the courthouse. What's up, y'all? They're not used to that. But I say, you know what? Good on y'all. We need more black people to understand how justice or injustice works. Black folks need to go down to more court cases and be involved. And you know what I'm saying? Tell people what is going on. So kudos to all the black folks that are down there. I'm not flying into town for that shit because I live in Minneapolis. But if I still lived in LA, I'd probably be right down there with our mind. Like, what's up, y'all? This tea is piping hot. But right now, I'm not flying out there for that. You know what I'm saying? But for the ones who live in L.A., shout out to them for going out there. These people are, they're not mad because, oh, people have an opinion about Megan. They're mad because y'all are taking their jobs. Nobody is checking for Kat, whatever her name is, opinion on this case. But people are looking to see what Mo from Lawyers for Workers has to say. People are looking to see what Dennis Byron has to say. People are looking to see what Armand Wiggins has to say. People are looking to see what Millie has to say. And these folks are in their feelings. So like I told y'all, somebody said, who the fuck is Kat? I didn't know who she was till I seen that article that they're talking about suing bloggers or coming after bloggers. Everybody has a right to their opinion and how they see this case. And I don't like the fact that if you don't go with the mainstream narrative or what's being spun, that somehow you're misogynistic, you don't like black women, you don't support black women. I don't have to support anybody just because we share the same skin tone and a vagina. So let's make that very clear. I go off of evidence and truth and off of my gut and my spiritual intuition. And if something ain't cleaning the buttermilk, bitch, then it's not cleaning the buttermilk. I don't care if you're black, white, Asian, male, female, gay or straight. So we need to get off that. We need to get off that people can't have an opinion once it's a black woman or once it's a black man. People have been trying to shame me all week and I've probably been the most neutral person when it came to this case. I've stated all sides. I said I'm on nobody's side in this situation. 
But there's some parties in this situation that have made themselves look bad, and that's on their own accord. First and foremost, I've been saying from day one, why does this girl keep going live? Why does she keep getting into it online with DJ Academics? This is a real court case. This is a real trial. Why are you speaking about this? It makes no sense. The reason why everything is so convoluted and people are able to throw things back in Megan's face is because she was the main one talking. Before Tori ever dropped a song, before Tori ever said anything, remember, Tori was canceled. But now people want to rewrite the narrative and say, oh, everybody's been supporting Tori. No, they were not. Tori was canceled. Okay. Remember, uh, was that Bun B? You know, all the dudes from Texas came out. They supported Megan. Beyonce sent her presents. Rihanna sent her a, a fruit basket. You, you, Holly Berry sent her a get well package. Remember when she was getting all these gifts. Oh, look, Beyonce sent me something. Rihanna sent me this. And then instead of after this happened, staying at home and chilling, she was in the club with a Band-Aid on her foot. Her and Asian doll, Asian doll arm broke. Her foot shot. They in the club dancing. Again, perception ends up becoming reality. Had she stayed home or partied in her house and was not out like it wasn't a big deal, then people wouldn't have all these clips to keep saying, well, something don't seem right. Okay? On top of that, yeah, y'all can go back and watch my videos. I've kept the same energy. Something don't seem right. We're not saying that she wasn't shy. And then another thing that bothers me is that you have females telling me that's not right um, because, you know, for black women, it can be hard for them to want to go press charges. This isn't just like your average black woman. OK, she has a hedge of protection around her. She had Rock Nation. How, how am I supposed to cape for you and care more about your circumstance than you do? Make it make sense. A dusty Tom Thumb shoot you in your foot and you're trying to protect him for what this ain't nobody she went to school with this ain't her homeboy from way from back in the day this is somebody she smashed a few times she didn't owe him no loyalty that bullet could have ricocheted and god forbid killed her when he pulled out that gun to to start firing at that point he didn't care about his life because he was throwing his life away, possibly, and he damn sure didn't care about her life. But now I'm supposed to come running with a cape for somebody who didn't even press charges. The state had to pick up charges, okay? So the state picks up charges because she wouldn't even press charges. And then y'all keep saying, um, y'all keep bringing up her sex life. Who cares if she lied on Gail King? Once again, I don't give a damn who she fucked and sucked. She's grown. I've been said this. It's not my business. She's been carrying herself that way. Remember when she was in bed kissing on G-Eazy and G-Eazy had a little mixed girlfriend. And after that video came out, she dumped him. So she'd been moving, you know what I'm saying, real janky. So nobody was surprised that she was doing all this fuck shit to her own friend. But the point is, nobody's tripping about her like that line to Gail King. It just shows that if you can lie about something that petty when you a grown woman, what else could you lie about? My thing is, it wasn't so much even her lying to Gil King. She lied about that fight. Her and Kelsey both lied about that fight. And people had the right to point that out. If these people were trying so hard to harm you, why are we protecting them? Why are you lying about that fight? Because again, to me, from the outside looking in, Megan is more worried about her reputation for her fans. She don't want her fans to realize that she's fighting over some dusty peeing with her friend and that she fucked on her friend's man behind her back because that's not hot. That's not a hot girl move. That's scandalous. So she's more worried about protecting her reputation for her fans than her own safety. But I'm supposed to come in every day and cape for her? Absolutely the fuck not. If you're not caping for yourself, I'm not. I'm damn sure not caping for you. Everybody in this case is big and grown, okay? Now, um, 
I, I just find I find the whole situation really, really disturbing. The lies, the murkiness, even with Kelsey. Kelsey initially would have been a good witness, but the problem is Kelsey was playing chess while Meg was playing checkers. It was stated, because Armand's done a good job regurgitating the full thing. It was stated that at one point, which I had been said that I already felt this, Kelsey was upset because not only did she get left in jail, when Megan did the live stream, she said she went home, um, them bitches went to jail, meaning her best friend and Tori. Then on top of that, she allowed her fans to spin the narrative that Kelsey was the shooter. She never cleared her name. Remember in the diss song, remember Megan dissed her first. So y'all want to keep acting like Megan has done nothing to murk up this case. I, I, I just don't understand people trying to act new. Thank you, uh, Nicole. I don't forget shit. Megan dropped the diss track first. Okay? She kicked it off. Up until then, Kelsey wasn't saying too much. Once Megan kicked it off and made it seem like Kelsey was taking hush money and was siding with Tori and was the one coming after her for her leftovers and her sloppy seconds, that is when Kelsey got in the booth and her and Carl Crawford and whoever else wrote the track against Meg. In that track, she said, you didn't clear your best friend's name. In that track, she said, I'm frozen. Am I good or am I frozen? I'm good. Okay. So in that track, she's saying that you didn't clear my, you didn't clear your best friend's name. Um, she said that she was sucking seeds to succeed. She was saying a lot of stuff in that rap. I did a whole breakdown on those lyrics. I can go back and watch my old shit. And it was so funny that in this case, they ended up bringing uh, Kelsey's lyrics to trial. And they went through Kelsey's lyrics the same way I did on my YouTube live. I think I've been more than fair. Everything I've done on my live, they're doing in the courtroom. But you got this bozo talking about YouTubers are spreading misinformation and are not being fair. When we're little, well, me, I can't speak for nobody else. I'm going off of the facts and what I'm seeing all parties post and do on social media. On top of that, Kelsey says something else in that lyric, and I talked about this, where she said you had Dez calling me. And I told y'all this month ago, the Dez that she was talking about was Desiree Perez from Rock Nation. When Armand did his live stream, they were Armand was saying that she said that Dez called her because remember, Kelsey's trying to play dumb on the stand because now Kelsey's in her feeling. She's mad. Meg didn't have her back. So I'm going to mess up this case and murky up these waters because I'm with my man now. He's 1501. And I know that Meg got a case in a few months with 1501. So I peeped Kelsey's game. But when they played the audio, which Kelsey was probably hoping that they wouldn't play, but they went and played it because it was obvious with the games that Kelsey was playing. In the audio, she stated that Rock Nation, Des Perez and them called her and told her to move. After Megan had moved her to Cali to be her assistant, they told her to move and said that Megan was going to be out for a year. They had to figure stuff out. Megan was willing to pay for her uh, to give her a year apartment down in Texas. Okay. So they were going out their way to try and clean this situation behind the scenes. Unfortunately, TMZ and other people got the story out. So they weren't able to clean it up quick enough. So they were doing a lot of sneak stuff behind the scenes. But the whole time, Kelsey's reaching out to Meg. Meg ain't calling back to her. And at this point, Kelsey's looking at it like, I didn't do anything. You were messing with the dude I'm messing with. Because remember, I told y'all when quarantine radio started, and you saw Mr. Demon Time Daystar, he always had Kelsey on there. Then Kelsey caught COVID. Then all of a sudden, Meg was constantly coming on quarantine radio. And their, their little connection to me was kind of weird. They was getting drunk as skunks. 
kicking it real hot and heavy. And I'm like, well, damn, I thought Kelsey. Okay, well, whatever. Ain't my business, you know? So fast forward, she's reaching out to her. Meg ain't calling her back. Meg ain't clearing her name. So at this point, Kelsey's over it. Then a few months later, Meg reaches out to her and tells her, you need to go online and clear this up and let people know that sh that Tori um, shot me. At that point, Kelsey said, no, I'm not doing that. My lawyer has advised me not to do that, not to speak out about anything. And that's remember, Kelsey kept saying, I'm not talking about nothing. Y'all will hear about it when I go to court. I'm going to speak my truth in court. That is why a lot of people had Kelsey's back. And we said, you know what? We'll wait for Kelsey to just speak about it in court. Because at this point, Meg and Tori are both moving kind of funny. Kelsey at that point seemed to be the most neutral one. When she was heard on audio speaking in September, Armand said she was clear. She was concise. She was very truthful. What she did on that stand was some bullshit. And I held her accountable for that. Because I have no dog in this fight. I don't know none of these damn people. But what she said in that audio, when she was being interviewed, she said clear as day, Tori put hands on her. Tori was the one who shot Meg. But what Kelsey left out was that beating. So once again, all these people are liars. Kelsey left out that beating. I kept saying from day one, these two stallions were in that man's driveway, <laughs> going back and forth, bombing each other. Nail, girl, female nails don't just come off from sitting there looking pretty. When your nails come off, that's because you're out there bombing. So everybody wants to ignore the elephant or the horse in the room, which is missing fingernails in the driveway in jury. Meg ain't claiming it. Kelsey ain't claiming it. So let's figure out, well, why is Kelsey not claiming this beat down? The reason why Kelsey is pleading the fifth and don't want nothing to be used against her in the court of law, this is my, what I'm getting from this. They were bombing over the whole Tory situation. I believe Kelsey probably whooped Meg's ass. Meg, they were all drunk. But I believe Kelsey beat her ass in that driveway before anybody else got involved. Kelsey is scared of being charged with battery and assault. I believe that is why Kelsey omitted and did not speak about that fight. That is why Kelsey, when she got on stage, on the, excuse me, on the, on the stand, she said she wanted to plead the fish. She didn't want anything coming against her because that was assault she was fighting mag and so at that point i like i've been saying i believe what drunk ass tory because they were all drunk he's jumping in trying to clear up the fight not thinking he starts shooting pow, 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 pow. and when you shoot these type of guns they said you need eight pounds of pressure there wouldn't have been enough time for him to shoot and then Kelsey get the gun. There was no break. They heard the audio of the gunshots. There was no break in the audio of the shooting. So there was no Tory shot once or twice and then Kelsey grabbed the gun and then three more shots were fired. That's not how it worked. It was five consecutive shots, meaning the drunkard was sitting here probably firing in the air and what goes up must come down. Bullets were ricocheting. Those bullets were hitting the ground. The bullet hit the ground, hit her foot. The shrapnel and all that stuff hit Meg's foot. The whole situation is a mess, a straight up mess. Meg doesn't wanna talk about the fight because she was drunk, it's gonna make her look bad because they're fighting over peen. Kelsey don't wanna talk about the fight because it could end up with her getting charges. I don't believe Kelsey was the one who fired that gun. Meg and Kelsey have been saying from day one that it was Tori. But the problem is because everything is so murky, 
and Tory does have a good defense team. This may end up in either a mistrial or if he does get charged, he may not get that much time because they're really trying to paint it as if Kelsey was the one who shot. And they were saying that Kelsey had gun residue on her. And that and that residue might have transferred on to Kelsey if her and Tori were also fighting. Because remember in that deposition, she said Tori was beating her ass too and pulling her hair. So little man is violent. And we know that because we watched what he did to August Alcina. Simply because August wouldn't dap him up. All of a sudden he beat him up, busted his lip. Little man was the same one who was trying to fight Travis Scott. He's he's had a temper uh, he's had a temper for a while. The hood rat who was fucking everybody, Selena Powell talked about Tory putting hands on her, and I talked about this a year and a half ago, two years ago. I've been calling out his violent behavior. So for people to try and act like somebody's really on one person's side or another is is very comical. Not on any of these people's side. All of these people are documented liars. They all lied on the stand. They all omitted stuff. Does that negate the fact that she was shot? No. Does that negate the fact that she has trauma and she's hurt? No. But I don't have to run my cape behind any of these people. And I'm not going to let, you know, fake media outlets who are upset that black bloggers are now stepping into their space. You know what I'm saying? Try and shame me or anybody into riding and riding with somebody that I'm not, I'm not riding with none of these people. Whatever happens, happens. And it's very funny that they get upset when young black bloggers and people who don't have degrees and stuff like that step into their space. But yet and still, these same people step into the social media space all the time and get a bag. They have YouTube channels, they create content, they have blogs. Again, this is a public trial, meaning that as long as you stand in line, you can get in there. So they can't get mad because of how certain people are reporting. And as far as the fans and the people on the outside looking in, y'all shouldn't be looking for one source anyways. That's the problem. Y'all will look at one person and only look at them for your source of information. Y'all should be watching all these people. I'm reading everybody's tweets who's there. The ones I fuck with, I'm watching their stuff. So it's like, I don't understand why they're so upset. It's just funny. Y'all know me. I'm going to keep it real. Somebody said Tory Lanez, that little leprechaun, probably got a big beef stick, child. What's up, sweet ma? He might shit the way they was bombing over it. He might have some good peen, some good sweet meat. <laughs> I don't know that it was fighting over peen, not me. I'm just saying. I mean, I just, I don't get it. It got to be something because he ain't but five foot three. Shit. <laughs> Let me read some of these super chats. Shout out to all 11,000 people up in here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. Um, let's see here. Uh, Jaslyn sent 499 said, hey, sis, I got a raise today in your live. God is good. I'm going to go hang out with you in the tea sippers. Congratulations on your raise. And thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. Um, I know. I like that name. Send five dollars. Says happy holiday holidays to you and your family, Auntie. Especially the Discord family. Love y'all. We love you too, and thank you so much. Uh, Faith Keeper says this has been a pure circus team. Just want the verdict already. Yes, I child me and you both, and hopefully we'll have it by tomorrow. We'll see. Um, let's see here. Young Kobe says. Long story short. Kelsey got her ass beat by Meg bad and tried to defend herself with the gun and either Tori shot in the air to try to wrestle the gun away. The end, this ain't no gender war, three drunk, toxic folks. Yeah, I know that's one of the theories that, you know, Kelsey was losing, so she grabbed the gun and that's a theory, but I think it's the other way around. And the reason why I think that Kelsey was won that fight and was beating on Meg in her diss track, remember she says, 
I think she says, I think a girl from Barrett County, did a girl from Barrett County say something? And I didn't know what that was. And a lot of people at the time were writing in the chat that that county that because Meg claims to be from Houston, they're saying that that county that she shouted out in that diss track was the suburbs. So basically saying you a suburb chick, you not about that life. And she said, if I would have had the gun, you would have heard about a murder. So I believe Kelsey was the one who got the best of her. San Antonio, remember? She was making it look like you a suburb chick. You not about that life. You over here running and trying to make fun of me on the internet with your friends. But me and you know what it is. Kelsey's a hood ass chick. Even EJ said that. EJ said, you know, she's cool. But when they all get drunk, you know, Kelsey ain't no punk. Let's not forget her daddy um, was, a little, was a gangster rapper. Down there in Houston, he had a lot of connections. He ran with Jay Prince and them. A lot of folks knew her daddy. She's half Mexican. You know, them black, them black Mexican kids, they be off the chain because they black and Mexican. They stay fighting on both sides. So, you know, Kelsey ain't no punk. I just really, and it don't matter if Kelsey's 5'4 or 5'10. Just because you little don't mean nothing. I know a lot of little people who can scrap. Look how little ass Tom Thumb beat up big old August Alcina. August Alcina, damn near six foot six. Tom Thumb whooped his ass. Maybe he was in the elevator like this. So we're not going to do that. Just because somebody's little don't mean they can't scrap. Some of these little people be the most angriest, best fighters out there. So, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, Kelsey's half Mexican. Yeah, she's blacks again. But uh, like I said, I research. Yeah. Yeah, she's a black again chick. So, yeah, just because she's short, that don't mean she got the best of Meg. You know, so... Like I said, I, I've heard both theories, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. But I, I, for me, I feel like Kelsey was getting the best of her. And that is why Tom Thumb pulled out the gun and started shooting. Trying because he couldn't get in there and break them up. They were violently fighting. Remember the white man who was watching the fight? He's on his Juliet, uh, Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo balcony? And he's traumatized from watching the fight. He, it was traumatic. They were just fighting. I thought they were going to throw her in the river. So this fight was pretty bad between these two. So, child is a mess, honey. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kit Finn sent two. She says, I'm a hottie. This trial is a hot mess. It looks bad. Thank you. Finally, one of the hotties who's not going off on me and cussing me out. Thank you for being an honest hottie. Again, this is nothing against Meg, but I'm going to keep it real. She helped to convolute this case. She did too much in the past two years. This was going to be, that's why I kept saying, like, why are they acting like this is not going to court? Folks are online going back and forth, dropping diss tracks, just doing all types of goofy stuff. And again, they all set the precedence and the tone for this. They turned this into internet fodder. They turned this into a debacle. Hence why the internet followed suit. Okay? So you can't blame nobody but them. And then everybody keeps saying she's young. She's young, but let's stop acting like she's 15. All these folks are grown. And hopefully they all learn from this. They're all young, but, you know, we're not going to act like these are a bunch of teenagers either. All these folks are grown enough to drink and fuck, but now that someone comes to personal responsibility, they're young, she's young, but she ain't that young, she can drink and fuck. Everybody's grown to a certain extent. Again, y'all don't make this many excuses for regular people. I remember me and B.L. Sherelle was talking the other day. Shout out to my sis, B.L. Sherelle. Now, y'all know B.L. Sherelle got that beard, okay? She don't, she don't give a fuck. <laughs> B.L. Sherelle said, T, keep it real. If it was me and somebody shot my black ass, nobody would give a fuck. Just because I don't fit a certain aesthetic. Y'all be screaming this protect black women stuff when it's black women that y'all like and black women that y'all support. When it's your regular, everyday, regular, regular black woman or black woman who don't look like nothing in y'all's opinion, y'all don't go this hard. B.O. said, if that was my bearded ass that got shot, nobody would give a fuck. They'd be like, oh, well, shit, he thought she was a nigga. Oh, well, you know, y'all would have had all types of excuses. So, you know, again, we need to have the same energy 
when it's also right because there's regular women out there every day dealing with femicide getting killed getting harassed so that's why i don't respect the fact that all these people are playing in my face and in the internet space in a court of law. This was a real serious situation. Somebody was shot at the end of the day and all y'all are coming up with these convoluted weird stories, omitting certain things, lying for no reason. It's silly, it's silly. Especially when there's real black female femicide out here. Y'all heard when my tea sipper, bless his heart, when he called into the green room, he's called into the green room several times. And his, his sister passed away the same day that Takeoff died. He found out his sister was murdered. So I, I don't take all this stuff lightly. It's not funny. But I just hate the fact that y'all will cuss me out. Y'all will come at bloggers. Y'all will go off on us because y'all go harder for celebrities and y'all do regular people. There's a girl right now in your neighborhood dealing from, you know, with domestic violence. And y'all don't go that hard. But y'all go hard as fuck for any celebrity. And the second somebody says, well, this doesn't make sense or pointing out the facts. Because again, I'm not making anything up. I'm literally pointing out facts of the case. Y'all get upset. I'm not playing into y'all's delusions. And I'm not playing into this uh, media lady's delusions either. Now all of a sudden, Amber Heard was, was bullied and picked on. The same lady who I covered for two years before it ever went on trial. I was one of the main people on YouTube who covered it, did my own breakdown and told y'all that Amber Heard was a damn liar and told y'all was bogus that nobody believed Johnny. They automatically sided with Amber Heard. And it wasn't until they went to trial that people finally saw Johnny Depp was innocent. I had said he was innocent three years ago. But again, I'm a black woman, so nobody cares when I post shit, except for my tea sippers. Everybody else acts like I don't exist. The same way these, you know what I'm saying, folks took my theory about Kelsey in 1501 and ran with it. Every The next day, everybody had the same theory. Carl Crawford came out and was like, um, we ain't got nothing to do with this. You know what I'm saying? So now it's my fault. So it's like he was responding to my video, but they want to act like I don't exist. But when I put stuff out, I actually have journalistic integrity. It doesn't make sense to sit up here and make up lies. If you actually take time to sit down and do the research, you'll find the truth. This is why I was able to put so many things together before it even came out in trial. Uh, let's see here. It's on, baby. Oh, I like that name. $49.99. Thank you for the super chat. Says, hey, T, continue to triumph, flourish, being blessed by God because you are magic and extraordinary. Keep on winning because your journey is only going to get better. P.S. Can you say Black Kings? <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the love. Yes, honey. You not keep it real over here. We gonna call out the black dusty kings. Not all black men. Of course, you got some good black men, but the dusty ones, the Tom Thumbs, we gonna call them out. We was kings and shit. I'm not one of them chicks. I don't exalt any of these dudes. Okay, if you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. And to me, uh, Tori is a black king. Okay. Mr. We was kings and shit. And she had no business even trying to cape or, 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 or cover up for him. Fuck that. My life comes first as a black woman. Not covering up for no dusty king. We was kings and shit. <laughs> Y'all are a mess. <laughs> um, let me see. Y'all are. I'll pull it with y'all. Um. Jessica James says, I honestly think he will be he will be found guilty. The case. Oh, no. OK, I honestly don't think he will be found guilty. The case is all over the place. I pray all three of them move on gracefully. <laughs> hit the like button. y'all. Yes, please hit the like button. If y'all are enjoying the show, hit the like button. Yeah, I think at this point it is so convoluted. I don't know which way the jury is going to go. Like I say from day one, I have absolutely no dog in this in this dusty fight. I don't know which way the jury's gonna go, but they they they've they've added enough reasonable doubt that I don't think there's gonna be some on the jury that's not gonna be comfortable of convicting him. So a lot of reasonable doubt there. Um, Kitty the Jackson, thank you so much for the $49.99 super sticker. I appreciate you, sis. Hope you're doing good. Happy holidays. Um, 
Miss Boone says, tell it like it should be told, T. Thank you so much. Um, what is this? Her, her nemesis, Chris, sent 199, says black media is social media. We are trendsetter. We are trendsetters. Yes. And you know, that's what's so funny to me is the arrogance of some in white media to try and dictate how we can talk to our own people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Hollywood Unlocked, no jumper. We all have our own little fandoms. We all have our own little fans, people who rock with us. You know what I'm saying? Over here, we tea sippers in this bitch, okay? Um, you got different fandoms. And different people rock with different people. You're not about to tell us how we can talk to our audience, how we keep it real with our audience, how we interact with our audience. Just because you got to write some bland ass shit like, oh my God, and I went to the child and this is what happened. That's how you talk to your audience. You're not, you're not about to dictate how we relate to our audience around these parts, ma'am. So they can miss me with all that. I'm not feeling that. I, you know, and I hope, I hope all the black folks in Atlanta go down to that young thug trial and y'all take notes and, and, you know, give up information and, you know, let us know what happened. Cause we need more black people going to these court cases. It's been too long. It's been white media telling us what's going on during black trials. And that's what it is. They're upset because now they're walking in there and they're seeing all these minority faces. Usually black folks don't go to shit like this. We wait to get information from them and then we make our videos. But now black folks are like, nah, I'm coming down to this trial. Bitch, I got my pen and I got my pen and paper. Look at this cute ass pen I got from the dollar store. <laughs> dollar Tree. They in there taking notes. Armand had a whole notepad. I said, I know that's right. They're taking it seriously. Let them people be mini journalists. Why y'all mad? Don't be mad because you went to school for this shit. We just happened upon it. Now, granted, not everybody should have a soapbox. Let me keep that real. Because some of y'all are just, just batshit crazy. Y'all come up with, y'all just pull shit out the air. No facts. So not everybody on social media deserves a soapbox. But for the ones who are doing the right thing, for the ones who are not fucking documented uh, YouTube liars, okay? For the ones who are actually taking this seriously, this thing that we call, you know what I'm saying, uh, black media. Give them their props. And stop trying to minimize us because we don't have the New York Times behind us, because we don't have Fox News or CNN behind us, because I work just as hard. I don't have no whole team. When I'm researching, I am researching. I ain't go to bed yesterday till about three o'clock in the morning researching all this shit on damn Master P and Romeo. I found so much tea on them, I'm going to turn into a deep dive. I said, nah, we're going to deep dive this shit. Oh, I found a lot of tea on both of their but um, yeah, now nah, I'm proud that a lot of young black people are stepping up and they're going to these court cases. Y'all not about to shame nobody and try and scare them off. So y'all make sure when Young Thug's trial starts, y'all go on down there too and take y'all's notes. I won't be flying down there because, you know what I'm saying, I'm stuck up here. But if there was a trial in Minneapolis, I would go down there. You know what I'm saying? So, but there's no big trial right now. Uh, the last uh, cop for the... George Floyd situation, he got three years. So uh, that's, you know, that's the last trial. Um, but yeah, yeah, the, yeah, there's, oh yeah, I find all types of Miller tea. We're going to talk, that's, that's going to be a deep dive. This, I was very disturbed. Very, very, very disturbed. That would be a deep dive though. Um, TT says, Tori must got that thing thing. Y'all some freaks. He might though. Because, I, I mean, goodness. They say big things come in little packages. I'm just saying. He ain't got the hype, but he might have the girth. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> he said good dick had two best friends fighting. Mm. The way they was bombing and nails was popping off. He was putting in some work. Shit. I can't stand y'all. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Chocolate Bunny sent five says, child, I don't believe none of them. They are all lying. Kelsey shot her. I'm over this whole case. Ooh wee. Thank you for the super chat, love. Um, Yana says, you're incredible, lovely T. Happy holidays and happy upcoming new year. Thank you so much and happy holidays to you too, sis. Appreciate you. 
Uh, Ray Midnight says, tell him T. Thank you so much, Ray. Thanks for the super chat. Um, Young Kobe Sen5 says, remember Meg recently tried to sign a petition to not use lyrics in court? Mm, exactly. Remember, I was probably one of the only YouTubers who pointed that out. Remember, and then people try to attack me in the comment section because again, I don't like the moves that she makes where as soon as she has an issue with men in the industry, the same men that she was fucking on, like the baby and others, all of a sudden it's a black woman issue. Absolutely not. This sounds like this is between you and your rap friends, okay? Now in that video, I was telling y'all that Megan, the baby, and Drake and their uh their music labels, Warner Music Label and all these other labels, they were signing petitions to keep lyrics, song lyrics, rap lyrics out of the courtroom. And I and I pointed that out. I said to me, y'all remember, put a teacup if y'all remember I did that video. And her horse head fans were mad. And I said, this doesn't make any sense because I feel like if you're stupid enough to do the crime and then rap about it in a song and they're able to pinpoint and match certain things like they did with Bobby Schmurda and them, Mitch caught a body about a week ago. Then we find out Mitch really caught a body. Well, then you're the dummy. I feel bad for you. Nobody's telling y'all to spill y'all's guts. Ain't nobody crying tattoo tears for AR Rab. All he did was run his damn mouth. Me and my homeboy in Philly, we was on the block shooting. And then we saw one of the other homeboys, so we stopped shooting so he wouldn't get killed. Remember when we almost killed you? Like what, like, what is this? I don't feel bad for any rapper telling all their damn business on Vlad's dusty ass couch or in their song lyrics, okay? So I found it very funny when I did that video. I said, no, you're not gonna pull black women into this mess with you and Drake. Because the other day you and Drake was cool when y'all was co-signing this fuckery about people's lyrics not being used against them. And I think that's silly. If you're dumb enough to rap about it, it should be used against you. Okay, so you're co-signing it, and then we fast forward two months later. Now all of a sudden, her own team. Uh, we need to uh use Kelsey's lyrics against her because you know on line one, section two o four, Kelsey said this. Oh, now y'all want to use song lyrics? Oh, oh, where they do that at? <laughs> Yeah, that again, this is why I have no dog in this fight, okay? But remember, they was crying in the comment section. Not you take enough for Drake over a black woman. Even though in the same video, I literally drug Drake for 20 minutes behind Serena. Remember at the block, one of the hotties, he kept writing the same shit. Just stupid. Um, Yeah, so, and, oh yeah, and then speaking of Drake, let's get on Drake real quick since we're talking about song lyrics, okay? Now, isn't it funny that good old Drake, uh, you know, he didn't want song lyrics used. Pull up. We've been, we've been reporting this on uh, my Instagram page. Well, they're saying this is what's going on with Drake. Let me, let me show y'all this. Good old Drake, honey. They're saying that he uh, might have something to do with XXX Tenstashian. I don't know how to pronounce that. His murder. They're saying his murder trial is scheduled to begin next year. And the defense attorneys for one of the four men charged with the 2018 murder have presented a list of potential witnesses, including Drake, 6 9 Joe Budden, and more. So the T, what I found very funny is what I wrote. This, you know, I was writing little stuff in the comments. I said, now I see why Drake, Megan, and the baby were fighting so hard, along with the music labels, to not have rap lyrics used against them in a court of law. But y'all not ready for that conversation because y'all be too busy worshiping these folks and cussing me out for pointing out the damn truth, okay? Now, the reason why this is interesting is remember, Drake kept rapping all, he kept throwing all this shade at XXX because XXX refused to kiss Drake's ass. Drake stole his flow. I did a whole breakdown years ago on the whole Drake and XXX beef. Y'all can look it up. I, I couldn't tell you what the video was called. Uh, Drake stole his flow. And see, Drake is the type, he feels like, you know, as soon as he like remixes your song or, you know, shouts you out or follows you, you're supposed to, you know, oh my God, it's Drake, it's Drake. Oh shit, it's Drake. XXX wasn't that dude. XXX is from Florida. You know them Florida people, they're built different, okay? 
I don't give a fuck about Drake. You stole my style. I'm not going to do that. Because remember, before the ex thing, he stole somebody, the dude in the UK. I forgot. Y'all write in the, in the chat. There was a UK rapper. He stole his swag. Then he tried to come to Florida and steal XXX's swag. Y'all remember the XXX song? He got mad. Yeah. And then, so XXX was cussing Drake out, calling him all types of P words and everything else. He didn't give a damn. So then they started beefing. And then uh, around the time that X died, Drake was saying things like, you know, some, 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 we shoot below the neck. Y'all write the lyrics down, child. But he was, he was, yeah, Skepta. That's the name. Uh, Skepta. Uh, Safu202, thank you. That was the person he was stealing his swag. Yeah, and gigs. Yup, thank y'all. And then he tried to steal XXX's and X wasn't having it. So that's where their beef originated from. So I find this to be very interesting because I remember a lot of X fans when X died, they were going through Drake's lyrics. Because remember, X put out a tweet. He said, if something happens to me, Drake did it. And then Drake was saying, somebody, when we shoot, we shoot below the neck. And then that's where X got shot was below the neck. And then he's, he's, there was another song. It was another song. I can't play the music though. That's the only thing we were talking about it on Discord the other day. It's White Boy. It was a new song, and the White Boy was on TikTok breaking it down. It was something about 20, take away 20 times 10, take away 10. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's some lyrics with 20s and 10s in it. Y'all can write it in the chat. Y'all know I'm old, child. You know, I've got brain fog. Can't remember too much. It was something with a bunch of numbers, and they're saying that the numbers is what equated to like something with XXX. I'm gonna see if y'all know what I'm talking about. It was a bunch of 10s and 20s. And yeah, he did say some shit in sicko mode. I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to uh, find the video and post it on my Instagram. No, it's on his new sign. It's not, it's not Jamatra. <laughs> Somebody said Jamatra. No. It's like sometimes it's it's a lyric to a song. It's on his new song. I'm trying to see if somebody knows what I'm talking about. But the white dude is going viral on TikTok. Rich Flex. Is that the song? Rich Flex? Okay. Okay, I think somebody got it. Unique special 31 says, he said 20 minus 10 minus 10 is 2-5. He will be alive again. That's it. There's a white boy on TikTok. He's going viral right now for deciphering that. Y'all know the internet. They love to decipher shit. But yeah, that's it. And so they're saying that that's about XX sex as well. So what I'm thinking... It's very interesting that all of a sudden Drake is fighting for lyrics not to be used. Now, I'm not saying Drake had anything to do with his death, but let's keep it real. They've been saying this ever since XXX died. So now they're talking about they want to call Drake to the stand. So I, I don't know, but I'm going I'm to be paying close attention to the situation. I just find that very interesting. But yes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's on TikTok. It's on TikTok. Uh, let me see here. Read some more. Uh, Victoria Charleston 10 says, I loved your coverage. Very thorough, neutral, and holds Tori, Meg, and Kelsey accountable for their messiness. Integrity and objective reporting are rare these days. We need your voice, Auntie. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, Kwani Bodie says, Megan said Tori shot her. That clears Kelsey's name. Thank you for the super chat. Yvette starts at 9.99 says, thank you, lovely T, for all your hard work. I really appreciate your breakdown. You are so welcome. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Blatino boy sent five says, T, I can't stand you with that white chicks reference. <laughs> Y'all not love my white chicks. <laughs> thank you for the super chat, love. Um, let's see here. K Bragg says, every time I see that man's face, I mean, can we blame Meg for lying? 
that's a secret she should have took to the grave. But see, the problem is he was popping at that time. See, that's the problem when your your social climate. Remember, he may not be popping now, but in in twenty twenty, he was popping with that quarantine radio. Remember, everybody was stuck in the house, and Tori would be doing quarantine radio, and he'd act like it was a damn dinner bell. He ding 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 ding, come on in, come on in, Tori's live. And all the, and you see all the blue check marks. Everybody would be in his live stream. He had girls twerking and everybody was on demon time. You'd see all types of nipples and you know what I'm saying, ass cheeks at any given time. He was cracking. So I can see how she had no problem sleeping with him. He was cracking at the time. Now he's not cracking as much, but back then he was, you know, and he, he was even going to get a show at the time. They were going to do some type of quarantine radio show for him. But, you know, this whole situation um, messed them both up. So they took that away from him. Uh, let's see here. Paco Flacco. What's up, Paco? He says, facts. I wonder how the same media outlets will react after knowing Megan lied and that DV activists who supported her after Megan used her support to build her lie. Mm. Thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate you. Are you going down to the um to the trial in ATL for Young Thug? Let me know if you go down there. I would like some tea. <laughs> Cause it seems like everybody's just turning. Oh, and matter of fact, what's so funny, when I did that uh podcast with BL Sherelle, and I was telling y'all, I said I felt like Young Thug's sister was basically sending a dog whistle, like, oh, you know, it's cool. You know, ain't no beef with Gunna. You know, he did what he had to do. We don't feel the way. And I was saying in that podcast, I felt like she was saying that because if she would have showed any other emotion but support, they could use that against Young Thug. They could say that she was sending dog whistles for Young Thug's crazy fans to go after Gunna. <clears throat> well, messy ass whack 100 said he talked to Young Thug's people and he said that they're pissed. And that they had no idea that Gunner was going to switch up the way he did. So, whack is just messy. Messy as hell. So, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with that case. But they want Thug. They definitely want Thug. He's the big fish. Um. Oh, I've been out here an hour. Oh, my gosh. Look how time flies. We got over 12,000 people in here. We got 3,000 likes. Please hit the like button. The math ain't math then. Please hit that like button. Um... Let me talk about this real quick before I go here. Um, where is it? Romeo. Romeo, Romeo. So Romeo has come back out. He claims he's finally getting a check. I'm trying to find the damn. Hold on, where is it at? Oh, here it is. Okay. Let me show y'all my screen. Give me just a second. So after I did my video on the drama between Romeo and Master P. Um, he came out and said he's finally getting paid for his involvement in rap snacks this year, <clears throat> following the social media feud. So Romeo says, I would like to thank James and Taylor of rap snacks for seeking the truth and doing proper business. This year I will get my first rap snacks check. Finally start receiving my earnings for my bag. I was told as a kid that we own rap snacks and that my payday would come after we put in work and sold the company. Silly me. I promoted a company for free for 15 plus years based on the words of my pops without being allowed to see any contracts or even meet with the team. I stayed loyal, <clears throat> but I'm entitled, but I'm entitled and ungrateful now. Only addressing this here because my father is trying to gaslight and break me instead of taking accountability for his mistakes and greed. This is just the tip of the iceberg. My mental is very strong because I do the work, but no man or woman should live a lie to protect another. My stand isn't about money. It's about perception of money. My, father's no my father knows that I made the most earnings over the past 10 years and played my part quietly as always so he could shine in time the truth will prevail and i believe when my father truly 
lean on only God and not image and money, he will be the richest man in the world if that's what his heart desires. None of y'all love my father more than me. I know my sister's passing was a warning. And just like Moses in the Bible, the man that leads the people out isn't always allowed to the promised land because of his own ego. Don't have to be perfect, but I can't follow someone who's been blinded. Y'all make fun of me because y'all think I was raised a certain way, but I was built for this season of ridicule and misunderstanding. I'm willing to be judged and walk through the fire for my family in hopes of great leader, in hopes of a great leader waking up. I've reached out behind closed doors and got burnt repeatedly. He's an adult and has to do the honest work as well. Like I told him, I have to love from a distance until then. I have a family now too, and it's critical I protect my peace. No more suffering in silence, the rise of the phoenix. Then he goes on to say some more shit. I'm not reading that. <coughs> um, then he shows some screenshots of his conversation with the rap snacks people. Somebody named Taylor saying, thank you for this notice. Can you provide me with the billing information so we can process your commission this quarter? Thanks. Then they show the pictures. So this is my comment. I said, not Romeo going through puberty on packages of wrap snacks <laughs> and not being compensated. You can't make this mess up. Master P very much made it seem like he invented and owned rap snacks. Shake my head. Romeo has been grown Romeo for 15 years. He should have been hit up rap. <clears throat> he should have been hit up rap snacks with the hay with the hay big head invoice. Shaking my head. So like I said, the more I dig into this entire situation, um it's a mess. It's a mess. So, but I'm gonna put it into a deep dive. It's a mess. And he's not as innocent in this as he's trying to portray. Initially, I thought he was, but the more I really like dig into everything and think about all the things that have gone on over the years with these two, he's not as innocent either. And at what point as a grown adult, do you then take charge? Okay. Romeo is 33 years old. He's dirty for the shit that he's done. Don't get me wrong. But he's 33 years old. And you're just now hitting them up with the invoice? It doesn't make sense. It shouldn't take for you to have a family. Like he's little, like I remember him promoting rap snacks at the age of 12 on 106 in Park. And they were acting like they owned the company and this was Master P's idea. So for him to come out now and say that, you know, he hadn't gotten a check after all these years to me is silly. It's silly. And I, I'm just, I'm seeing the games that are being played. Neither one of these two are innocent. Master P has done a lot of shady shit, but so has Romeo. And I'm going to dig deep into it. But yeah, he's he's not innocent at all in this. And the fact that it is very interesting because every few years they'll come out and they'll blast the black community for not making him a billionaire. Remember he was cussing out everybody it was like three years ago during quarantine on the breakfast club, you know, it was black folks fault that he wasn't a billionaire. I'm like, why is it our fault? Not only were you the ice cream man, one of the biggest drug dealers in your projects, you made millions of dollars over the years. You should have flipped that and turned yourself into a billionaire. Why are we obligated to buy your bleach? Your rice, your grits, your pancake mix, your syrup, your ice cream, your ices, your coconut water, your shoes. I mean, this man sells everything. Cleaning supplies, his face is on everything. You're literally doing private labels, sir. Like, <laughs> y'all remember that shit? He went off on the black community. Said it was our fault that he's not a billionaire. It sounds like you got spending issues, sir, because you should be very comfortable. 
He shouldn't have to work this hard in his old age. Had he managed his money right? Same with Snoop Dogg. He's out here selling scams. I posted this earlier. Fantasia was saying some real shit. Y'all swerping down these folks be so rich and balling. From uh, the sister fan, Fantasia was saying some real shit. Let me pull it up on another screen <clears throat> so y'all can hear it. Give me just a second. All these folks act like they're balling. And that really don't be the case. Look what Fantasia said. You have more money than we have, Fantasia. You don't know that. <laughs> okay. a, lot of, a lot of artists that you see, they look like they have it. And we smile and we come out and we, we put on a good show. But in real life, some of them are struggling mm. and we don't have it. I'm just now building myself back up. I lost everything twice. Mm. So I cook my own food. I don't need no chef. I'm from North Carolina. Yeah, but you have more money than we have, Fantasia. You don't know. Okay, so you heard what Fantasia said. She said, I cook my own damn food. You know, Fantasia done been bankrupt. She done been broke. She's built herself back up. And Fantasia's a sweetheart. I've met her before. Very nice lady. Now, again, this man swears up and down he's rich. Every time he has something to say to the people, there's a box. There's a product placement in the video. A box of cereal. Why does he need to stand I mean, I stand, sit on his steps with a box of cereal next to him if you live in good. Show me the video of uh, any white entrepreneur, actor. Show me the video of Brad Pitt sitting next to a box of cereal. It's okay, I'll wait. Show me the video of Diddy sitting next to a box of cereal. It's okay, I'll wait. Now, remember, Snoop Dogg was the main one going in on Kim Kardashian. Remember, she was all types of, she wasn't shit. Uh, Kanye needs to get rid of her. He needs a black wife. Kanye needs a black wife. But now I find it very funny that Snoop Dogg and his black wife are being paid to promote skims by Kim Kardashian. As much shit he done talked about the Kardashians, they are promoting skims. You can't make this shit up. Romeo says he's never touched his own money because it went to pay Master P's taxes. All my siblings are broke and never had money for college. We're living check to check. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. That's why I've been telling y'all from day one, everything that glitters is not gold. Y'all be exalting these people to God level. Y'all swapping down because these folks been in the game for 150 years. They're rich. Snoop Dogg is literally out here promoting pancake mix with his mom's picture on it. He's promoting syrup. Uh, he's out here promoting cereal. He's promoting skims. One thing I will say is that 2020 showed us who really had it and who didn't, okay? People can say what they want to say about folks who work in nine to five, but one thing I will say about folks who work in nine to five is that a lot of us are better with money than a lot of celebrities. Look how as soon as COVID hit and everything shut down, how many celebrities ran and were spreading their damn ass cheeks, male and female, on OnlyFans? Regular folks was over here like, well, hell, I got enough, you know, saved up for the next three months. Got some PPP money. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here hustling and doing what I got to do. All the celebrities were spreading it wide and dropping it low on OnlyFans. The same people who talked down to regular folks. Right now, Little Fizz, we've seen every orifice of Little Fizz. Why? The same man who was acting like he was balling on loving hip hop. We have seen every orifice of him. That ain't cute. We done seen that mushroom tip in that booty hole. Why? Because most of these folks are living a facade. They're not living that trife life. So while little Romeo was over here trying to add, he was so much better than his castmates on Love and Hip Hop, you doing all this talking and riding hard for your daddy, and you don't, you're not even getting no money. He taking your Love and Hip Hop, I mean, your, your grown up hip hop money. He said he ain't been paid for shit. He doing those ICDC colleges, the little, uh, the little commercial, 
and can't even afford to go to the school. You can't make this shit up. <laughs> you can't make this up. Somebody got mushrooms and peaches in the chat. Y'all are a mess. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying, like, again, and, and this is not just celebrities. A lot of these YouTube influences, too. Remember, a lot of these folks, they get off on trying to make people jealous. They spend more time trying to make people hate on what they got. I got this big old house. I got all these bags and shoes. And then six months down the line, or no, like six years down the line, when ain't nobody watching their videos, people have outgrown them, then here comes, you know, the sob story, or here come the, oh, I'm pregnant, we having another baby, so that way more people can come back and watch, Ace Family. You know, <laughs> a lot of these folks really don't be about that life. They're really bad with finances, they don't have it like that. All they have is a persona and a, and a name. Remember, Let's take it back to Titanic. That's one of my favorite movies. Every time I'm on the plane, I'm always watching Titanic. I'll never let go, Jack. Proceeds to let him sink to the bottom of the damn ocean. Okay, Rose. So one of my favorite parts in Titanic, remember. Oh, yeah, Todd Recall. Oh, thank you for bringing him up. He was the main one. Remember, everybody thought he was rich. He's over there dancing with Taylor Swift and doing all these moves and shit. He went and got that big old house. Hey, y'all, this is my house. I have an Amazon. Uh, you can go on Amazon and get me stuff for my house. My housewarming link for Amazon. We find out this man was renting that big old mansion. He didn't own none of it. And had to know to be a past due. He would rather rent something for $10,000 a month than to just take his money and go buy a two, three, four dollars $400,000 home. He'd rather try and make y'all jealous and hate on him than to just live within his means. These people are weird, okay? Had the nerve to ask for housewarming presents for a home that he didn't buy. So anyways, during my fav one of my favorite movies, Titanic, remember that scene? Rose was acting, you know, unbecoming of a lady. She's kind of getting smart. And so the mom is in the room with Rose. Remember, they're tying her up in that bodice. The, the maid was tying her up. The mom was like, Molly, go on somewhere. She starts tying up Rose. Ugh. Ugh. Rose is like, you know, Rose can barely breathe and shit. You know, mom's trying to crack her back and shit with them strings. She's like, what do you think you're doing? What are you doing? And Rose is like, oh, calm down, mother. You'll get a nosebleed. And the mom just pulls them strings even tighter. And she turns her around. All we have is our good name. All your father did was leave us with a bunch of debt. What are you doing? This is a perfect match between you and Hockley. Why do I know this whole movie by, oh my God, I've watched Titanic too many times, Chad. I know this whole damn movie. My point of bringing up that scene is that Rose and her mama, they were dead broke. They were the front and ass influencers of the damn, when did that damn shit go down? 1875 or some y'all write down in the chat, child. They were the front and ass celebrities and influencers of the 1800s. These mofos then snuck onto the top deck with all these other rich people. This bitch and her mama should have been down in stage with all the poor folks. But they were able to get 1912, thank y'all. I said 1842. <laughs> 1912. That's what I'm saying. People been, people been fronting for a long damn time. So they're up here at the top of the ship, knowing damn well they ain't got no damn money in their bank account. All they got is the daddy's good name. He left them with a, with a legacy and bad debt. So again, everything that glitters is not gold. So the mama, if the mama could, she would have fucked Cal herself. But she, she know Cal didn't want that old ass box. Cal wanted the daughter. But if she could have, oh yeah, she would have got with good old Cal. So she was trying to pimp her daughter out. So that way her daughter could marry well. And then she'd be taken care of. Remember she tried to fake cry. She tried to pull a Karen. Do you want to see me be a street, a seamstress? Do you want to see me work in a factory? <laughs> I know that movie too well. <laughs> Remember, she was trying to gaslight her daughter. That is Master P and Romeo. 
in a nutshell, that is the hip hop boy version of Master P and Romeo. Romeo, you want to see me back in the Calio projects, man? You want to see me go back to being an ice cream man and selling ghetto dope? No, daddy, I don't want to see you doing that. I love you, daddy. Well, then you better go out and go sell these rap snacks and pimp yourself out on growing up hip hop. Drop music that nobody cares about and help me sell this bleach, rice, uh, fish fry mix, ice cream, water, pop. giant have to sit there with products when he's talking to the world it screams insecurity everybody should know who you are without product placement whatever the hell he was saying in that poem y'all go back and watch the video <laughs> masterpiece in time i follow masterpiece that's how i know all this his entire page is just one big product placement I've never seen somebody place products in everything. He could be like, hey, you guys, I'm going live at five. Make sure you go and grab this Master P coconut water, you heard? <laughs> what? <laughs> Me and Romeo are beefing right now. This hurts. My son is blasting me on social media. <laughs> Box of cereal right next to him. I'm really hurt, but make sure y'all buy that Snoopy Loops. <laughs> so again, Fantasia said it right. A lot of these folks be fronting, child. They don't have it like that. Um, so y'all don't feel bad. A lot of this stuff is smoke and mirrors. Do not feel, that's why I was telling, don't let nobody shame you about working a nine to five. Because everybody ain't meant to be a boss or an entrepreneur. It is not easy, especially when you have to depend on other people for your money and hope that people, you know, like what you're selling and, and like you and things like that. It is not easy. So don't don't never let none of these folks shame you. That's one thing, you know, I've never done here. I'm grateful for every supporter, anybody who's ever sent a super chat. I don't care if you send a dollar, two hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all don't have to. That's why I never understand when people think they, that it's okay to shame folks who work a nine to five. Those nine to five people are the same ones watching your raggedy ass reality television shows, giving you ratings. They're the same ones supporting your products, buying your merch, buying your music, going to your concerts, buying your clothing line. So when people start getting money, then they want to talk down to people. I, I would never understand that. It makes no sense to me. But yeah, Master P, man, him and Romeo, they're a hot mess. Um, let me read some more Super Chats here. Uh, Day 5 says, I love your channel as well as your deep dives. The one on water has me questioning my own consumption of water. You are my main source of information, entertainment, news, and laughs. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I'm so glad you love my water deep dive. You know, that one came out of nowhere, but it came right on time because we are dealing with the water shortage, you know, globally. So um, that is why I really want to put that out there because I think everybody needs to think twice about how they consume water and to just be aware, you know, it doesn't make you a bad person if you take a longer shower, but maybe, you know, the next day, take a shorter shower, you know, just try and do little things um you know to just look out for the environment because we're all we got 
one big circle of life. So whatever somebody does on one side of the world affects us all. So thank you so much. I'm really glad that you like that deep dive. That was one of my favorites to put together. Um, let's see here. Two Babe Nato sent 20, says Merry Christmas, lovely in the teacups. Uh-uh, no, you didn't. Now, thank you for the super chat, but we are the tea sippers, not the teacups. You sound like Ronan. They almost drove Ronan one day. We're going to call into the show. Hey, teacups, who was the teacups? <laughs> tea sippers. But thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming through and happy holidays to you. Um, Candid by Tanise says, happy holidays, T. Lady, the memo. Oh, hold on, it refreshed. Uh oh, where did it go? Ah, uh, just refreshed. I'm sorry, it just like totally refreshed. Let me see if I can find. I'm gonna read another super chat, and I'll keep looking to see if I can find it. Um. Oh, okay, I find it. Here we go. Uh, she says, "Happy holidays, T. Ladies, the memos went out. We ain't we ain't winning." <laughs> For kings no more spread the word yes yes <clears throat> you got to put yourself first you know what i'm saying you got one life to live there's no reason to protect anyone you know especially when it comes to your life we're not out here protecting no dusties at all at all so thank you for the super chat love um rolo sent 1999 says thank you for always sharing your positive energy with us you are so welcome thank you rolo uh, Rebecca says, thank you for always giving an unbiased opinion. That's what everybody else needs to do. Thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, Miss Diva says, lucky for them, I'm not the judge on that trial because I say lock them all up for perjury. I bet you somebody would definitely sing. Yeah. Yeah, they've all, they've all muddied the waters. So I don't understand why they're now trying to play crazy. Uh, Nancy sent 20 says, T, this is my first time I'm able to catch your live stream. I love your show and your thoughtful perspective on issues. Keep doing what you do and wishing you even more blessings this upcoming year. Thank you so much, Nancy. I appreciate you. And I'm glad that you're able to catch the live stream. So welcome. Um, oh, somebody sent some money from Qatar. Let's see here. So Sina, Tedese Way. I'm sorry if I butchered it. Uh, she sent $10 in Qatar money. Says, hello, T, please cover the World Cup 2022. Love you. Love you, too. That World Cup has been interesting. You got people flashing themselves. You got a reporter. He done died, honey. They said he died because of his shirt, but then somebody else said that he was sick. So I don't know. We've covered some of it on the um, on Instagram. But thank you for the super chat. Um, Let's see here. Tiff J says, my favorite YouTuber. Thank you so much, Tiff. I appreciate you. Uh, Melanie Beauty sent 11 says, binge watching your true crime videos. The Freezer Mom vid you did showed a picture of the little brother. That was Adrian Jones. He got fed to pigs by his dad. He deserves his own vid. Love you. Oh, and Busted came up in the, um, in the search, but thank you. Oh, a matter of fact, speaking of the true crime, <clears throat> I hadn't been on that channel in about two weeks. <clears throat> Excuse me. I went over there yesterday and that video on Kwame had over 200,000 views. I was shocked and like 13,000 likes. So thank y'all so much for watching the video and liking it. I was shocked because I was literally, y'all remember the last time I talked about the true crime channel? I was like, I ain't going to watch these videos. I ain't going to make them because I got other shit I got to do. You know, I be doing deep dives and, you know, I got so many other things that I have to edit. So seeing that people took time to go over there and watch the video, thank you guys so much. And I'm just glad that I was able to tell Yolanda's story, you know, because so many times we don't know about the victim. I'm starting to work on a new series for the True Crime channel. Um, it's going to be really, whoo, it, it takes you through a roller coaster of emotions. And I'll talk about it. I'm probably going to shoot that probably tomorrow, but it won't be up until next week. But I have another true crime video coming up. So definitely stay tuned for that. So thank you guys so much for just taking time out to watch that Kwame video. I appreciate it. Um, the channel is called True Crime Tea Time is the channel. So, yep. 
Yeah, like I, I end up getting like 10,000 subscribers over there. We're not like 300,000. So y'all really went over there. Y'all subscribed. Um, y'all watched the video. Like I was literally blown away yesterday because I don't go on that channel all the time. So when I went to go look for the video and see where it was at, I was like, oh my gosh. I said, I know that ain't my video sitting at 200,000 views. I felt like one of these white true crime people, honey. I said, okay, I'm giving, what's her name there? Uh, Kendall Ray. So I'm giving Kendall Ray a run for her money. I like Kendall Ray. She's sweet. So I, I was happy. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Uh, Beast, what's up, Beast Lee? He says, Romeo's biggest album was his first and sold 500K copies. No one on Nickelodeon made that much money either. No, hold on. Number one was, no one's really checking for him. What is his <laughs> I'm, I'm working on this deep dive. What, yeah, I'm working on this deep dive on Romeo and Master P. It's a mess, child. It's a mess. Um, and, you know, the thing that's sad, though, real talk, is we have things in place, right, for, like, acting. Like, when you're acting in Hollywood, we have Coogan's Law. And for y'all who don't know what Coogan's Law is, it was named after somebody, Coogan. Y'all can write the name, child. Um... I can't think of the name, but I know it's Coogan's Law. And what happened is that there is this kid whose last name was Coogan. What is his first name? Somebody write in the check, John. <laughs> Brain fog. <laughs> um, there was a kid whose last name was Coogan. And he was Jackie Coogan. Thank you. Appreciate you, uh, G Angel. That's why I love my chat. Y'all be helping me out. So <clears throat> Jackie Coogan. Was out here working in Hollywood. He's acting and shit. Romeo, Romeo, where is that Romeo? And, you know, crying and just, you know, he's working like 20 hours a day and shit back in like the 1940s. So they're working this kid. So now the kid becomes of age. He's 18. And so he goes to his parents. He's like, okay, well, I done worked my whole damn childhood. I need some money. I'm going out on my own. I want to be able to buy a house. You know, I want to be able to get married. Parents was like, ain't no money. He was like, wait, what? No, ain't no money after all these years I done put in. I done been in all these movies, all these TV shows. Where's my money? And the mom was like, ain't no money. We spent it. You ate, didn't you? You lived in this house, didn't you? You had electricity, didn't you? So at that point, Jackie Coogan was upset and he uh, sued his parents in the studios. And so they decided to come up with a law that basically was supposed to protect child actors, that whatever money they earn, I believe it's about 30% is supposed to be put aside in a trust fund for these child actors, okay? So this was back in the day, but parents still be ignoring Coogan's law because remember we was growing up in the eighties. What happened to get uh, Gary Coleman? Remember he was on different strokes today, Different strokes today. Now the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. What might be right for you may not be right for some. He's a man of... Okay, let me stop. That was my show. So he's on different strokes, working his ass off. What you talking about, Willis? Every other episode. And so now Gary Coleman gets grown. He goes to his parents. Hey, need my check? Want to get out on my own? I'm a grown man now. Um, you know, I'm grown. Parents were like, ain't no money. <laughs> it's not funny. It's sad, but I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm silly. Sometimes you got to laugh to keep from crying. But the parents were like, ain't no money. He was like, wait, what you mean ain't no money? So he ended up suing his parents. So we were kids watching this. We we're like, oh, damn. Arnold is suing his real parents. Maybe he should have went to go live with that white man. At least the white man had money. So Arnold sued the parents. The parents were like, they didn't have it. So it's been a lot of mess where parents will have kids in showbiz. Their technique's supposed to put aside a certain amount of money. And they're not doing that. And it seems like this is what happened to little Romeo. Because as much work as little Romeo put in from the age of, I remember him being on one of them No Limit CDs at the age of six. My daddy messed the pee. Romeo, did you do your homework? Yeah, daddy, I did my homework. I forgot the name of the song, child. He was about six. That little boy was working for a long time. He was on those original TRU. 
Y'all remember T.R.U., True, uh, No Limit Soldiers? He was on them original soundtracks and shit. The mama used to rap too. Don't forget, Miss Sonya used to rap. So they've been working Little Romeo, but it looks like they ain't been putting nothing aside for Little Romeo. It looks like Master P did, you know, he pulled a Gary Coleman's parents. Like, you see this mansion you've been living in? You see these lights? All these rap snacks? <laughs> All these shoes and shit you've been wearing? That is your payment. And that ain't right. At the end of the day, you're supposed to put aside a certain amount for your children. Now, I say that to say this. Got a lot of these uh, parents on YouTube. Y'all not ready for this conversation. The Ace family, they get sued every other month. Have they put aside anything for their four children? They keep having babies to create new storylines on their channel. But I wonder if they put anything aside for them babies. They're not the only ones. Who was the other? A, no, Ryan's World. Yeah, he's rich, rich. They better put some money aside for him. Uh, who was that family? The one he, he got all them kids that kept having babies for a storyline, then he got caught cheating and shit, and now they disappeared. Who was that family? The Shaytards. I wonder if they put aside money for them kids. Them kids is grown now. We don't watch them, you know, grow up, go through puberty and everything else. Do they have their 30% Shaytards? See, folks ain't ready for that conversation because a lot of these family channels have used their children to get views. If a lot of these folks did not have babies and, you know, people didn't get attached to them because of their families, most people wouldn't watch them. Most people don't care about uh, the Ace family like that. They care about the children. Everybody know the mom and daddy corrupt. So... It's going to be very interesting to find out if, if these kids that have been pimped on YouTube, because that's what a lot of this is, people having babies for, um, like I said, YouTube storylines, they be on the brink of divorce, nobody's watching them no more, then, oh, I'm pregnant. I wonder if these people's monies, these kids' monies are being put aside. Because I think in the future, there will be laws put in place for internet vloggers and family vlogs. They haven't been put in place officially yet, but I believe they will be. Because again, when you work on set, there's certain guidelines you have to follow. Kids can only work so many hours. They have to have lunch breaks. Um, they have to have tutors. But when these people are filming these kids, and I'm using Ryan's toy review, I'm not saying anything that the parents have done. I don't know these people. I'm just using him as an example because he makes a lot of videos. Um, most children are not doing videos in one take. So how long is Ryan really sitting there playing with these toys? And then a lot of times they shoot from different angles. Is Ryan only sitting down for an hour or is this a 12 day, 12 hour shift? Those are real legitimate questions. So, um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting as these kids get older to see what happens. Yeah. Macaulay Coffin was another one too. He had to sue. Somebody said the DMB family. Who are they? Ain't that the one that the dark skin dude and that mixed girl? And y'all was crying because a girl wanted her baby to have. She was crying because her baby didn't have her green eyes or something. The DMB people. I don't watch any of these family people. I only hear about them when they go viral, but I've never sat and literally watched a family vlog. I refuse to. Family vlogs, boyfriend, girlfriend channel. I don't watch any of that shit. It's all fake. I don't like people playing in my face. Um, oh, thank you, uh, Butter Pecan. Said Nick Cannon. Yeah, let me get on Nick Cannon. I've been on here an hour. Dude, my God, almost two hours. Time is flying. Okay, let's talk about Nick Cannon before I go. Um, some Hold on. Somebody did their math. They said Romeo been working for 27 years. That means he started at six. He did. Romeo, if you go back, um, Romeo was on some of those TRU uh, CDs back in the day. He's having whole conversations. He's in intros with his daddy. Yeah, Romeo been working for a long time. The Prince family. Yes, yeah, a lot of these people got these family vlogs. So good luck to them, child. Um, so anyways, let's talk about good old Nick Cannon. First, let me pull this up. 
don't know. Okay. He tried to really gaslight Lil Duval. Let me see if I can find this real quick with him trying to gaslight Lil Duval. The shade room was posting it. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Does it come up? Okay. I was trying to go through the hashtag. Okay, here it is. Perfect. I found it. Okay. So the other day... Uh, Dickless Cannon, whoops, sorry, aka Nick Cannon, he was being interviewed and he basically was saying that he admitted to feeling guilty, um, because he has all these kids and he doesn't have enough time to spend with them. And what I find very interesting is that the only reason why he's saying this is because Mariah Carey came out. Remember last week I had talked about this. Mariah Carey came out and she was upset because she felt like Nick Cannon was not spending enough time with the twins. This man has so many children and he has a 12th child on the way. So this is what I wrote. <laughs> I'm always writing some shit. This is what I wrote. <laughs> so I took to Instagram and I said, but when I said that Father Abraham needed more than just money to actually be a good parent, Several dusty kings were arguing me down in the comment section. Now he's admitting that he can't properly care for 11 plus kids at the same time. Shake my head. Funny how he's coming to this goofy realization when baby number 12 is on the way. Clown face emoji. So, you know, like I said, it wasn't just me, but a lot of people were saying this for months. There's no way that you can properly care for 11 children in six or whatever how many different homes okay it is hard enough for a two-parent household to care for different children it's just it's hard it's not easy being a parent it's not easy parenting especially when you have to work full time money does not equate time so mariah carey came out and she blasted him so then he felt the need to talk about it so then little duval said this and Nick caught himself trying to punk little Duval. I guess. Uh let me show y'all this. Give me just a second. So this is what little Duval said here. The shade room posted it. Little Duval says it took 12 kids to realize this laughing emoji. So Nick Cannon replies back and says if you find something funny about this clip that deserves a LOL, like, you know, a laughing emoji, call me directly. I will explain everything to you face to face. And then little Duval came back and basically apologized, um, you know, to Nick Cannon. And I felt like he didn't owe Nick Cannon no type of damn apology. Apologize for what? The truth is the truth. He put this ghetto soap opera out there for the world to digest and have opinions on. Lil Duval don't owe him no damn apology or explanation. He said what the hell he said. You're out here acting like this is some new damn news. You're on baby number 12 crying about you don't have enough time to spend with all these children. Well, duh. We said that when you was having all these babies, when you were on baby number four, we were like, whoa, slow down, Nick. But see, he thought it was funny. Because at this point, it seems like he's just addicted to just having children. But then he's not realizing that he actually has to raise them outside of just cutting a check. Well, now it seems to be that there's more drama in Nick's little haram. Um, the dark-skinned baby mom, I guess she thought her life was going to be different because she was the exception to the rule. And she's finding out, no, you just like the other little racially ambiguous ones. Your child will be ignored just as well. So she took the social media to throw shade. So we wrote, Nick Cannon recently spent time with baby mama Bree Taisi uh, and their son Legendary to see Santa Claus before posing alongside his other baby mama, Abby De La Rosa, and their children together. 
His baby mama, Lanisha Cole, appeared to shade him on her Instagram stories on Sunday. She noted that their daughter, Onyx, who is three months old, is incredibly blessed and is surrounded by so much love. And it's not fake IG photo op love. It's real day in, day out love. Which I thought this was tacky because you're attacking your very own sister wives. So let me show y'all. These are the pictures. So this is him, you know, fronting for social media, acting like him doing a photo op with Santa means anything. So that's him with uh, De La Rosa and the twins. And that's him with the Asian Bay mama, uh, Bree. And she wrote, Daddy and I look legendary. Oh, oh, took. Daddy and I took legendary to meet Santa. Okay. Then she wrote, this is kind of small. Let's see if I can zoom in. Nope, can't. There's no need to, oh yeah, then she was trying to check her followers. There's no need to mention me or send me anything to my DMs. This has nothing to do with me and no need to be messy. It's all love over here. And so this is the part where she was saying that, you know, her daughter is blessed and she doesn't, and it doesn't include fake IG photo ops. So everybody just basically roasted her in the comments. I, you know, put a, oh, not this 666 likes. Let me go ahead and like this, honey. 667, the devil is alive. Uh, I wrote a, you know, a tiny violin and two clown emojis and kept it pushing. There's really nothing else to say about these people. Um, she's getting the same treatment that everybody else is getting. Why is she upset? It doesn't make any sense. You guys knew what it was, so why throw shade at the other baby's mother? Why are they all of a sudden doing photo ops? You're doing the same thing. You decided to be baby mama, and what is she, number 10 or 11? I think she's number 10. So you decided to join in on this circus, and now you're mad because you're, you're a part of the clown in this circus. So I feel no ways about her. I, I think it's kind of wrong for her to throw shade at the other women. You're a clown too. You know, you're part of the photo op you know, too. You're literally taking your child who's three months old to go see Santa by herself. That is sad. And then somebody in the comment, I think it was Amber, said that she has a new man. Her child is three months. Like, it, it doesn't even make any sense. If you can have a new man and your child is three months, why even be a part of Nick's Haram? She could have just had a child with somebody else who didn't have a child. So that way her child could have the support of both parents full time. Even one of the baby's mothers was even saying that they have to call his assistant to schedule time. So I, I don't think any of these women thought this all the way out. They thought this was cute. They wanted the attention. They thought it was a quick bag. But now they're realizing that they have little human beings who need that male energy. And he's not going to be able to provide that because he's only one man. Okay, your king can't be in multiple places at once. But when everybody was saying this, everybody was jealous. Everybody was a hater. But now that Queen Mariah has spoken, now all of a sudden, yeah, it is kind of hard. Yeah, it is a lot of work. Oh, boy, with speed. No, I don't feel bad for him. It's ridiculous. And it's sad because so many people were excusing this just because he's rich. Having money doesn't mean anything. It's about spending time. It's about being there for your children. Money does not mean anything. Money is nice. It helps. But he's about to miss half of these children because they're all literally within a few months of each other. He's going to be missing half of their first steps. Imagine not being there to see your child's first steps. It's one thing if you're at work or, you know, you're busy. But no, you're at this baby's mother's house. But this child is about to take his first steps. This is just insane. The whole thing is just giving me just, you know, dusty black Kang energy. <laughs> and now she's mad. Be mad at yourself. Don't come trying to cuss out the followers. Don't send me nothing to my DM. We're going to keep sending you shit to your DM. You joined this circus shit. Well, not me because I have a life. But whoever's sending their shit to her DM, they're going to keep doing it because that's what social media does. You know, social media messy as hell. Oh, at such and such. You see this? <laughs> Social media is messy. As soon as the shit go down, they're going to be at you. That's what they do. 
can't yell now and try and distance yourself. You joined this circus. We didn't know who that you knew who she was, but we didn't know you was pregnant by him until you made this grand announcement. Girl, bye. Y'all gonna keep on getting tagged and shit. <laughs> oh my gosh, all this dusty king energy child. Okay. I've been on here for almost two hours. Anything else I need? Let me read a few more super chats. I'm gonna get ready to head out. Uh Let's see here. Melanin Queen sent $10, says, not spreading the cheeks, T. I cackled, especially at the thought of little fizzle pop in his lopsided mushroom cap. <laughs> he tries to call a pee. Love you, sis. Love you, too. Oh, we. Yeah. I don't even want to think about that. Oh my gosh, let's see here. Uh, Keosha Henry says, laugh my ass out, please, T. Master P and Ro that Master P and Romeo impression sent me. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, Phil T says, it's almost 9 p.m. in Baltimore and I can't get out the door to go to work because you got me over here dying. Girl, don't miss work, sis. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Thanks for coming through. Do not miss work, though. Um, let's see here. Uh, she and Tell says, hey, T, I met Fantasia and gave her a calligraphy gift. She said it was cute. I asked and asked if I had my own business. That pushed me to go for it. Love you. Yeah, Fantasia is really sweet. Thank you so much for the super chat, love. Um, let's see here. I think I have missed somebody who, okay, I did. Uh, Cass, Cass 8145 said 9999. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. They said, oh, my God, I'm happy I caught the live. Love you, T. I've been watching you since the 1800s. Happy holidays and New Year. Be safe, everyone. You be safe and happy holidays to you, too. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Sarah Jason, $49.99. She says, Megan needs to leave that liquor store alone, seek therapy, and keep her inner circle small, and leave leprechauns alone as well. I agree. I think they all need to slow down drinking. And I caught that out months ago. I said she has drinking problems. I get alcoholic vibes from her. And people said it was judging. That's not judging. That's being honest. This is a young woman who at the age of, what was she, 23, 24 at the time, was running all around the industry telling people to drive the boat or yeah, drive the boat where she would come up to people with a bottle of Hennessy and literally just pour Hennessy down people's throats. And people thought this was cute driving the boat. And I said, this is not cute because Megan can drink like that. And is it driving the boat? Yes. Yeah, driving the boat, right? Because she has security around her. She has protection around her. But when you're encouraging young girls to drive the boat, they don't have a whole, they don't have a hedge of protection around them. There's a bunch of guys in the club watching young girls take bottle of Hennessy to the head like they're grown men. And that's who they're going to try and get with and get some by the end of the night. Remember when she was trying to get Chloe, what's her, Chloe Bailey to drive the boat and Chloe didn't want to and she got an attitude? How do you get mad because somebody don't want to drink like a fish? Ma'am, I don't know you. I'm not drinking behind you. I don't want to drive the boat. They're all alcoholics. EJ even said that between Meg and Kelsey, they drunk six bottles. I mean, I'm not a drinker. I think that's excessive. In a span of, of, of that short time that they were at Kylie's house, they went through six bottles. A very strong liquor. But again, when you, you know, point out the obvious, somehow it's bashing. So, yeah, I hope she ends up really after this, no matter which way the trial goes, seeking therapy, getting a clear mind, finding a new group of friends, you know, because all this drinking to suppress stuff. And all this excessive drinking to, you know, bottle up her feelings or whatever she's going through. 
it's not a good look. When you really think about this entire situation, this situation boils down to three grown adults who could not handle their liquor. It was three people who are drunk out their mind, okay? And a bunch of ego got in the way. Her and Tori were arguing over Meg's ego got bruised because she's seen Tori sniffing behind this white girl, Kylie. So she felt the way because she's low-key smashing Tori. But Tori don't want to leave with her and Kelsey because he's trying to do something with Kylie. So she feels away and runs back in the house claiming she's looking for her flip-flops. Then she tells Tori, you need to leave and come with us. They get the arguing in the car. She starts talking about his music. Your music's whack. You've only had a few features, this and that. So now she's bruising his male ego. And he's drunk, right? So she's bruising his ego by talking about his music. So then he, in return, wants to bruise her ego. Oh, you want to talk about me and my music? Well, tell your friend you're a trifling bitch because you've been fucking me and I'm fucking her and you knew I was fucking her. So now Kelsey, who's also drunk, now her ego's bruised because the dude that she thought she was with one of one, he's smashing my friend. This all boils down to alcohol, excessive drinking, and ego bruising. And it ends up turning into a woman getting shot in her foot. This could have ended very, very bad. Somebody could have died. All because they want to sit around and just be drunk and crazy. It's sad. But again, when you tell the truth, you'll have the, the horse hotties in here crying. Oh. <laughs> With them horse emojis. <laughs> They'll be here with them horse emojis crying when it's the truth. So, you know, everybody's ego was bruised over foolishness. Whereas if these folks were sober or not as drunk, it would have been water off a horse's back. They wouldn't have cared. Kelsey would have been sober enough to say, you know what? I'm out. I'm not fooling with you right now. I'm going my own separate way. Tori, had he been sober enough, he'd have been like, you know, no, I'm going to stay here and just chill. I'll let you later. Meg, if she would have been sober enough, <clears throat> she would have left with EJ and Kelsey and not came back running behind Tori. So again, that liquor ain't no joke. And also, like I've told y'all before, <laughs> yeah, I said water off a horse's back. <laughs> It's usually a duck, but I mean, being that their logos is a horse. Um, also, remember what I told you guys about liquor. I talked about this a long time ago, and that's why I said I didn't like the fact that she kept promoting driving the boat, driving the boat, driving the boat. <clears throat> Another word for liquor is spirits. In Islam, um, they talk about the jinn and spirits being in liquor. When you drink, you are inviting spirits into you. That is why they call liquor spirits. That's why they say uh, um, when somebody's drunk, they speak a lot of truth. They say a lot of things. Liquor is truth serum. They say a lot of things and they behave in ways that they wouldn't if they were sober. You can't tell me there wasn't some demons at play in this whole situation. And I'm not even trying to go really deep or really spiritual because I'm about to log up off of here. But that man said when he looked outside his Romeo and Juliet balcony, he was terrified. He saw the scene of utter chaos. They were fighting like lunatics over stupid shit. We just discussed what they're fighting over. One is mad about, you know, his album not doing well. And the other two are mad because they're fucking the same man. Pettiness. And they're bombing like, like they're all been possessed. He said he was so scared they were going to throw her in the river. 
There was some evil at work that night. He was so scared, he thought they were going to dump her body in the river. Like I always tell y'all, we battle not just against flesh, but spirits and principalities. Okay? And we all know that the, the Jenner clan, they dabble in all types of foolishness. If y'all saw my Quavo, not Quavo, my takeoff video, my deep dive on takeoff, look at all that dark imagery that Kim Kardashian was pushing. And this is a mother of four young children. Look at all that dark imagery that uh, Courtney and her new weird old fiance or husband is constantly pushing. And these are mothers of young children. But when you talk spiritual, y'all sit here and be like, oh, give it up. Oh, you be going too deep. You be reaching. Nah. There's spiritual things at play. Look how this case has literally divided the internet. Male versus female, black versus white. You can't even have a neutral opinion without being attacked. I was so shocked when I literally had some of her fans saying that it was my fault that Kelsey got on the stand and testified how she testified. How is that my fault? I don't know these people. Again, spirits, negative energy. Y'all are fighting harder for somebody that y'all don't know and accusing somebody of some shit I had nothing to do with. It's sad. Even in that comment section, one of her horse fans said that I was being biased because of how I titled the video. <clears throat> he said the fact that I didn't write Megan the Stallion. <clears throat> I wrote Meg the Stallion. He said that showed my bias. But what he doesn't understand, and I replied back to him, I said, you're an idiot because YouTube only allows us 100 characters. If I would have wrote Megan, it wouldn't save. So I shorten things. I abbreviate things so things can fit. But he said, just me doing that showed I was biased. This is how much these people be so obsessed spiritually with these celebs. It's not a good look. It's weird. It's very weird. The industry is very dark. There's a lot of things that go on. You know, and I just think that spiritually speaking, Meg and Tori, not only are they fighting a legal battle, they're fighting a spiritual battle. There are deeper hands at play outside of just what's going on in the courtroom. You have Rock Nation somewhere in the background. You have 1501 somewhere in the background. Uh, Tori is beefing with Rock Nation. Meg left 1501 to go sign with Rock Nation. Meg is currently beefing with 1501. Tori is cool with 1501. This situation goes very deep. But y'all not ready for that conversation. So like I said, you know, I have no real dog in this fight, but I do wish her the best. I do feel like at the end of the day, she needs to get it together. She's moving very fast. And she's not understanding <clears throat> the dangers that she's putting herself in. You know, trying to social climb and get to the top, but also stepping on certain people along the way. She's created a lot of enemies in this industry. So... I wish her the best, but I'm still going to speak my truth. So that, you know, the white reporter trying to shame all these bloggers, ma'am, you could kick rocks. So on that note, you guys, I've been down here for a while. I'm going to go ahead and get ready to log off. Um, let me read a few more of these here. 
Sugar Mafia sent five says, I don't understand how Master P can give Snoop a mansion, but couldn't put <clears throat> at least one child in college. His priorities are a mess. I love you, T. Well, that's because he wants to look good for the outside world. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about if you're are you a part of my no, you're not. Uh if you join the membership, you'll get access to the deep dive. So I'm gonna break it all down while he's moving the way he's moving. But thank you for the super chat, love. Um, let's see here. Ty TV says, I like you and Kendall Ray for the same reason. You both have integrity. Thank you so much. I enjoy her videos as well. So thank you. Um, Muyi sent 11 says, my first ever super chat. I love your channel. Greetings from the Netherlands. That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining me and have a happy holidays. Thank you. Um, my page refreshed. Uh, Lantho Speaks sent a $50 super sticker. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, Cheeky Entertainment sent $6.99. Says, AT watching from Canada. Been keeping up since December 2019. You are the first to inform me about the C19. Bless you. man. My man and I are watching you now. That is awesome. Thank you guys both for supporting me all the way from Canada. I appreciate y'all. So thank you. I know it's cold up there as well. Um, let's see here. Buckeye fan says Romeo Miller. Hold on. Says I'm Romeo Miller and Master P. Do you think parts of this reveal how parents can be toxic to their children without realizing it, especially in the black community? Yeah, there's definitely a lot of toxicity. Like I said, I want to do a deep dive on this situation because there's a lot of different angles with the Master P and little Romeo thing. Um, there's definitely a lot of toxicity at play, but it's not just on Master P. And I'm going to definitely break that down. But yeah, you have parents who literally do things to their children and think that it's okay because that's their child. And it's not okay. Your child is not your punching bag. Your child is not your confidant. Your child is not your man, ladies. Your child is your child. And we need to stop coddling children. And we also need to stop putting children in positions like they're grown. Allow kids to be kids. Because you're only a kid for about roughly 18 years. And then you're an adult the rest of the time. You know? So, yeah, there's a lot of toxic parents out there. Um, Forever Your Leo says, sending you some love to you and your family this holiday season, T. Left my ass off water off of a horse's back. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, sis. Thanks for coming through. Um, let's see here. Okay. Last one. Uh, Itsy Zaza says, lovely tea. I never thought about the gender clan being connected to the gin and spirits that cause the problem like Kelly Jenner. Mm, yeah. There's, there's definitely a spiritual aspect to the whole Megan and Tori situation. There's definitely a spiritual aspect to it. So thank you so much. Um, Beastly Sin 5 says, Worldly people would rather accuse you of instigation or involvement than perceive your discernment. Been that way my whole life. Exactly. Yeah, that's why at this point, when people write stupid shit, I, I'm just blocking them. I'm not, I'm not engaging anymore. I'm just blocking. I'm not, you know, because it's, it's just silly. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, um, somebody got mad at me the other day because we were talking about the gay situation with the rapper, the game and his daughter dressing grown. Um, and you know, I was talking about it and I was saying like, you know, why is he hashtagging girl dad? I've noticed that ever since Kobe Bryant, had his child, you know, had his four daughters. A lot of these guys are trying to use hashtag girl dad, but you have children of opposite sexes. You're not a girl dad. You have boys and girls. That'd be like me saying hashtag girl mom. I don't have any daughters. I'm a boy mom. You can't have one of each and be like, I'm a girl dad. No, Kobe did that because so many times people make fun of men who have all daughters. So that was a way for him to take his power back and say, you know, yeah, I may have all, you know, I may only be able to skeet all girls, but it's okay. I'm a proud girl dad. Now you got every man who has, you know, 17 kids by, you know, 15 different women. I'm a girl dad. 
sir, you have 10 boys. What the fuck are you talking about? This lady wanted to argue with me. I can't believe you're saying that he can't call himself a girl dad. No, because technically it's not correct. Why is that wrong to point that out? He has a daughter and he has several sons. How is he a girl dad? Are you insane? <laughs> it's like the things that irritate people's demons make no sense. It, 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 he's not a girl dad. He has a daughter, but he also has sons. He's not Kobe. Kobe is a girl dad. So because I pointed that out, I was the bad guy. Ma'am, you're blocked. You're an idiot. Go to the shade room. Off to the shade room you go. <laughs> I don't understand people who do that. It's just weird. It, it's just weird. But yeah, let me show y'all this picture. This was before I go. This was the game's daughter. She's 12. She does not look 12. So he wrote, somebody please to the Lord to help. She was just two years like a week ago. Now my baby is 12 years old and growing up. It won't stop. Then he goes on to tell his weird fans to follow her. Please follow her new page. At Callie uh, Dream Taylor. The old one was hacked. So now, not only is your 12-year-old dressing sexy, you're telling your mainly male followers to go follow her. Make it make sense. Then he wrote a disclaimer. Before the internet gets to internetting, me and her mom both agreed to let her do her makeup for this young and beautiful Combs twins 16th birthday party. Then he wrote hashtag I make beautiful babies, hashtag girl dad, hashtag I will die or do life over her without some other shit he wrote child. Y'all was willing to do life or, you know, go to prison over their daughter while disrespecting other people's daughters. So this was them. She doesn't look 12. Beautiful girl. Gorgeous little girl, but she doesn't look 12. And the twins, they're 16. I don't know, just very sexy. But again, like I said, I'm a, I'm a boy mom. So I don't too much try to talk on what little girls wear anymore because anytime I've said something, I've had women like, you have boys, you don't get it. You're a boy mom. So I, I said, I'm gonna sit this one out. Let the girl moms handle this because I don't have any daughters. So maybe that's how 12 year olds dress nowadays. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know because, you know, I don't have any 12 year old daughters, but um, yeah, I thought it was kind of grown. You know, I thought she looked as old as the twins. I, I was shocked that she was 12. Like I said, they're all beautiful girls, but they all look grown as hell. But yeah, so that was the point of the topic. And the person was mad because I said he's not a, a girl dad because he didn't use it in the right context. No, he's not a girl dad. Kobe is a girl dad. Somebody said, not my daughter, not my 12 year old. Yeah, they look very grown. You know, I hope they had a good time. But yeah, they just, they look grown. I don't know. I just feel like... Um, even like with Northwest, she just looks so grown. Like I was shocked when I found out a few weeks ago, she was only nine. Cause I had assumed she was 12 or 13, you know, but then again, these girls, they look a lot older cause the food and, you know, chemicals in the food. Cause my, my friend's daughter, she sent me a picture of her daughter. I thought the little girl was 14. Boobs as big as mine. Very tall, beautiful little girl. I said, oh, I said, dang, she's getting grown now. I was like, she's like, what, 14? She was like, no, she's 10. I said, 10? She said, yes, can you believe that? Because me and her was just straight up and down when we were 10. We had no booze, we had none of that shit at 10. These kids look grown. I thought her daughter was 14, beautiful girl. You know, so it is hard, you know, because you want to keep your kids innocent, but their body says otherwise, you know? So it is hard. So I, I'm not you know, knocking any people who have daughters, it's not easy. And especially being that little girls are bombarded all the time, you know, with just a lot of overtly sexual messages and how they should look, especially on Instagram. And a lot of the people that they follow on Instagram and TikTok, they look grown. They look, you know, very sexual. They're always walking around in crop tops and, you know, bra tops and all that stuff. So I, I can see how hard it is, you know, um, for people raising daughters, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's a lot. All right, you guys. Uh, Joanne says, hey T, I haven't caught a lie since the summer, been working like a damn horse. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> but I'm definitely liking the short hair. Woo -woo. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. 
All right, y'all, I've been on here for over two hours. This has been a great stream. I thank you guys for joining me. I hope you guys had a really good time. Hope you guys were edified. Lots of good conversations in the chat. So you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, if I don't do a live stream before um, the holidays, you know, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, everybody. But I think I'll probably do another live because hopefully we'll get the verdict tomorrow or the day after. And once we get the verdict, I'm going live. So we might we might have two lives in one week, okay? So we'll see. I will talk to you guys later. Enjoy y'all's evening. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.